Thank you. And I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners and particularly Annie B. Uh, what a beautiful welcome to country. Thank you very much. Uh, I also want to thank you, Alan and Sam and all your team. What a terrific job you've done moving this whole conference online at such short notice. So well done. Uh, and good afternoon to Minister Littlecrowd uh, and all of the Northern Australian leaders who are uh, online. I cannot begin to tell you how disappointed I am that we're not there together in person to be able to have the conversations during the breaks and around the tables uh, as we discuss the most important agenda that we can be about our nation's future and the prosperity of our children, uh, the Northern Australia agenda and fully fulfilling the potential of Northern Australia. So thanks to modern technology, I'm coming to you from Townsville. And it is fitting that Northern Australia, which has for so long uh, led the world in uh, remote education and telehealth, should be hosting this conference virtually. I mentioned too that I come from Townsville because I think that where we live drives our priorities. And the Northern agenda has been constrained by Southern thinking. The thinking that does not have the necessary sense of urgency and focus on why we should be developing the North. In my view, there are four pillars that must be established to grow Northern Australia. They are affordable and reliable electricity, access to insurance and capital, suitable infrastructure, namely road, rail and air, and fourthly, high quality medical care, aged care and child care. And among many decision makers, there is a lack of understanding that the cost of commercial and northern commercial electricity in Northern Australia are staggeringly three times more than what it is in the South and double what electricity costs are in our competing nations like the Congo and South America for mining. The transition to renewal, renewable energy and the lack of power provider competition in the region has resulted in increased costs to businesses and to homes. And it is why, regardless of the power generation source, transmission lines must be upgraded, modern capacitors installed, and the North be connected to the national grid and enjoy the benefits of competitive pricing. Another constraint is the lack of understanding of the basic requirement for a level playing field in access to insurance and capital. Now, the capital part has in large part been addressed with the introduction of the very important NAE facility. This is a facility that has been the subject of significant and necessary rescoping as we learned what was necessary to convert a brand new northern focused $5 billion fund into transformational investment in the North. And despite a slow start, as projects move from application and approval to financial and drawdown stages, some $3.1 billion has been approved and committed to. And of that, $374.8 million has been paid out. Now, the new chair, Tracy Hayes, and CEO, Chris Wade, are really driving that agenda. I know they have a significant amount of projects in the pipeline, and I look forward to seeing the continued rollout of the NAVE success. Uh, one example of that is that there are now cranes on site at Townsville's James Cook University building new student accommodation secured with the NAVE loan. Access to affordable insurance is critical for businesses and homeowners, and without it, there is limited ability to access finance. Uh, it affects the housing shortages as developers are unable to uh, build projects uh, and rents increase. For those of us who live and work in Northern Australia who pay the premiums or worse have had to shop around looking for coverage, we know that the, Northern, uh, the insurance market in Northern Australia has failed. And it is with enormous gratitude that I congratulate Warren Edge member for Leichhardt on his long advocacy on this matter. And finally, the intervention of the Treasurer and Minister Sukhkar with the $10 billion reinsurance pool. The scope of this fund has been worked through and an issue that has developed over decades simply cannot be fixed overnight. It is really frustrating to hear critics uh, criticise this incredibly important policy rather than leaning in 
and finding solutions to the problem and contributing to the northern perspective. While talking about Northern Australia, it's important. It's what we can do, what we have done and what we are doing, both as a federal government and in private enterprise, that matters most. But the question we must always ask is why do we devote so much energy, money and brain power to Northern Australia? And amazingly, the answer is the same as what drove those first settlers 200 years ago. The North is a natural progression of our nation's future prosperity. Its natural resources are a source of income, of taxation and royalties. It's close to our major overseas trading partners and it's significant from a national security perspective. So in light of the four pillars, with regard to why we should care about Northern Australia, I'm pleased to see excellent progress made, being made to advance our cause. This nation building work should be carried out in genuine partnership with state governments. Sadly, this has not been the case and it has been an unwelcome companion on our quest to move forward. But despite these headwinds, we do still move forward. The Minister has touched on many subjects uh, and projects devoted to this part of the country and I'd like to add some more to the already long list. The regions of growth to be piloted in the first stage at Mount Isa to Townsville. Cairns to Gladstone, Beetaloo Basin to Darwin Port and Broome to Kununurra to Darwin. This program invests $9.3 million over five years and will provide locally based support for business development and opportunities in the north. These corridors will receive priority attention and funding for road and rail investments and improvements that will revolutionise how we move people and freight both from and to the west. The Morrison government will invest $747 million to upgrade four key training areas and ranges in the Northern Territory to develop the, and enable the Australian Defence Force to conduct simulated training exercises and to remain battle ready. This is part of almost $8 billion in defence capital infrastructure works over the next decade in the Northern Territory alone. There are also plans to expand Townsville's military base and training areas as part of $3 billion in the Queensland defence spend. $155 million has also been put towards infrastructure at HMAS Cairns Naval Support Base to support the Navy's new offshore patrol vessels. Much has also been done to encourage private sector defence industries to establish a presence in the North. This sector injects $1.2 billion into the economy and the Morrison government is committed to awarding maintenance and supply contracts to companies that are based in the regions where bases and personnel are located. To this end, the federal government conducts face-to-face -face briefings with local businesses and ensures that our northern contractors has the best chance to benefit. Health. Townsville's James Cook University is the best training facility in Australia for regional and rural health services, particularly in Northern Australia, thanks to the federally funded Australian General Practice Training Program. 75% of nearly 1,800 JCU medical graduates since 2005 have gone on to work in regional and remote locations for periods of 12 months or more. And of that number, 1,000 are still in those locations, an extraordinary achievement. Now, this year, the Australian Government launched its $9.9 .9 million Remote Community Pilots Initiative, which will deliver literacy skills to Indigenous communities right across Northern Australia. Just last month, schools and childcare services at regional, remote uh, and disadvantaged communities around Northern Australia will share in more than $100 million to help improve access to care and increase workforce participation. Now, the Minister has already spoken about the Northern Australia CRC, and I have to add that I'm truly impressed by the CRC NA's work using innovation and science, and science to explore new opportunities for the North. These include 1,400 to 2,300 new direct jobs in aquaculture in the next 10 years, as well as $800 million of untapped high value exports, 13 million hectares of more than 24 million football fields of timber forests with commercial potential.
$13 billion in untapped potential for our northern beef and live export markets. Northern crop processing facilities such as cotton gins, seed mills and fodder production. The CRC in Northern Australia is also well into its trials of high value spice crops in the north with a view to opening up new export markets. I'm in regular contact with the chairs, Sheridan Morris and the CEO, Anne Stunson, and I'm excited about more work being developed, which will, uh, with regard to what sort of legislative and regulatory signals we are sending to businesses to encourage or discourage them to invest in the North. Already we see Kansas seagoing freight business, C-Swift, which is Northern Australia's largest shipping company. C-Swift continues to grow as a company and forge new markets, including the recently launched international shipping service between Singapore and Western Australia. Another example is Pacific Energy, Australia's largest off-grid power company based in Western Australia. Pacific Energy's capabilities have extended from traditional fuel technologies to integrated solutions incorporating solar, wind, battery and waste heat recovery expertise to minimise fuel consumption and emissions. American aeroplane giant Boeing has also signed up to use a drone testing facility in Cloncurry. And Gold Coast rocket company Gilmore Technologies is hoping to set up a launch facility near Boeing. It is critical that we provide regulatory framework that encourages Australian superannuation funds to invest more of their world leading $3 trillion under management into Northern Australia. The North is becoming littered with commercially viable nation building infrastructure projects that simply cannot get funding and have stalled. The solution is simple. We need to attract institutional investors like superannuation funds to invest in ports, roads, dams, energy generators and railways. This is something that governments, regulators and fund managers all need to work together to rectify and I'm dedicated to ensuring this occurs under the Morrison government's proposed Your Future, Your Super reforms. So, in closing... It is time that we as leaders for this half of the nation ensure that we're communicating effectively and working outside of our own agencies and businesses, reaching out to other like-minded people across government and regions to ensure we've leveraged every agency, every announcement and every budget dollar to ensure the North realises all of her glory. Minister Littleproud calls this policy harmonisation, and it is the key to expanding the work that has already been done. I want governments to positively discriminate in favour of the North, to demand that appointments are filled with people who live in the North, the contracts for consultants are awarded to companies based in the North, and to support projects and organisations that are right here in North Australia, because it is only with that kind of practical approach that we can fulfil our true potential and destiny with people who are as committed and invested and passionate as you are. Thank you.